Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue red pirates deck featuring a ton of cards from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. One of the main payoffs for the pirate deck is Breach's Eager Pillager, a 3 3 first strike, already pretty decent, and says whenever a pirate we control attacks, we get to choose one that hasn't been chosen between making a treasure preventing a creature from blocking or exiling the top card of our library that we get to play this turn, including lands if we haven't played one yet, and we can potentially get all three modes if we have multiple attacking pirates, so that can provide a lot of value turn after turn. Then we also have access to four copies of the crewmate, a 2-1. When it enters, we get to look at the top four cards of our library, reveal an artifact or pirate from among them and put it into our hand. So this will almost always hit some other artifact or creature that we can then put in hand. So a 2-1 that provides value when it enters reminds me of the merfolk, which was always quite powerful in that deck. So crewmate is no different here. And then we also have four copies of the new Spyglass Siren, a 1-1 flyer. When it enters, makes a map token, which we can use as an artifact to maybe sacrifice to our Voltage Surge to deal four damage as opposed to two. It also helps enable our Goblin Tomb Raider, which will turn into a 2-2 haste for one mana if we have an artifact in play. And it will also help trigger our Captain Storm, making a plus one plus one counter whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under our control that we can put on one of our pirates. So the Siren actually a very important role play for the deck and then as a 1-1 can maybe get some damage in and can also help crew the subterranean schooner a 3-4 vehicle for just two mana and the crew cost is only one so very easy to crew and when it attacks a target creature that crewed it this turn explores so that can also provide additional value in the form of extra lands or extra plus on plus one counters and a bit of card selection and then we also have two copies of Malcolm, the Alluring Scoundrel, to one flyer with flash, and when it attacks gets to draw and discard, so it gives us a bit more card selection there as well. And then one of our main removal spells besides Voltage Surge is the Kite Sail Larsenist 2-3 Flyer with Ward 1, and when it enters, can turn an opposing a creature or artifact into a treasure for as long as Larsenist stays in play, and can also do the same with our artifacts or creatures, so sometimes we want to upgrade a map token into a treasure token if we need additional mana, or if we're expecting a sweeper, we can turn a creature into a treasure as well, and that can maybe be more helpful. And then I'm also trying out two copies of the Roaming Throne when it enters and names Pirate, so counts as a Pirate as well, has a bit of protection with Ward 2, and then a triggered abilities of Pirates we control will trigger an additional time. So probably not at its best alongside Breaches, since we're likely to get all three modes anyway, and we're not going to be able to double up on any specific mode since it's only once each turn, but it's very good alongside Larsenist, which can now exile multiple creatures, Crewmate triggering twice is also great, and Captain Storm, once we make artifacts, can also go crazy with a roaming thrown out so it seems a worthy inclusion and as an artifact it also immediately triggers captain storm giving us two plus one plus one counters and then rounding out the deck i'm also playing two copies of sticky fingers which is great at generating additional artifacts to give us more plus one counters with captain storm giving a creature menace also quite good alongside the ability from breaches to prevent a creature from blocking that means that the opponent now needs three creatures back before they can block a single creature that's enchanted by our sticky fingers if we can prevent one from blocking as well and then if the creature dies we still draw a card so unless it gets bounced or exiled we'll still get our card back and uh, yeah that pretty much wraps up our main deck our mana base of course also got a very important upgrade with cavern of souls naming pirate making our creatures uncounterable on occasion you might want to name golem so you get to resolve your roaming throne and then we also have two copies of the restless spire as an extra creature land that can apply a bit of pressure so that in combination with our schooner can be very helpful when facing kind of those tap out control decks that mostly rely on sweeper effects to keep the board clear so that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Turn 1 could also go for a tapped land. Turn 2, Captain. Turn 3, Siren can enable it. Yeah, let's try that. If we expect removal on Captain, we could also go for Crewmate first and then turn 3, Captain plus Siren for immediate value. And against the red aggro, they're likely to play creature next turn. I do want to get a pirate down for breaches. So going double one drop is also reasonable. We'll get to attack with the raider and then next turn get two abilities from breaches. Sure. 
the name Pirates. And hit for two. And then Breaches making treasure can help enable Captain Storm as well. Likely taking three here. Goes for a Swiss Spear plus one mana. So could see a Monstrous Rage or some other burn spell. Looks like a play with fire to take out our Tomb Raider. So only one trigger for Breaches. Still pretty good. And we'll go for treasure. Alright, hopefully they don't have a lightning strike here to take out breaches. 3-3 three, three first strike, also an excellent blocker in the face of a potential pump spell. Can block etching and monstrous rage doesn't get past it. It's gonna be Godric flying over thanks to Kumano transforming to enable celebration, so we only take four. But yeah, no lightning strike it seems. And now a Larcenus could also be an answer to Godric. So I could play Captain Storm here. Then send in both Breaches and the Siren. Putting a plus one counter on maybe Captain Storm itself. And then we can exile the top card as well if we'd like. Find another Breaches. So now we've got a 3-3 blocker back. Opponent doesn't have a good double block since first strike will kill Swiss Spear and then Kumano is not enough to take out Breaches. And then we can still play Larcenist. Turning a map into a treasure as well as Godric. Not a bad turn. Got a backup captain if they take care of the first one. And then crewmate can keep digging for more action. Another Siren would be perfect, making a map token to trigger Captain Storm. Our opponent's got three creatures they kind of want to deal with here, and they decide to go for Captain Storm. So now Monstrous Rage could punish us for blocking Etching of Kumano with Larcenist, but that would mean they have to sack Godric in order to cast it. Just a Swiss Spear getting in. All right. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Cavern named Pirates. Play Captain Storm. Play Crewmates. Get a treasure from Breaches, which will give us an extra counter as well. And then another Larcenist versus Tomb Raider. Don't mind Larcenist. And then attack with just Larcenist and Siren, keeping Breaches back for a turn. Ooh, and a Voltage Surge as well. Can still cast that one. And then we're to put a plus one counter. Maybe Captain Storm once again. Could put it on Breaches so it's out of Lightning Strike range. But uh, let's uh, split the goodies. And this is only this turn that we can cast Voltage Surge. So probably just taking out Etching. And then I'll sack my previous map token. Okay. Another Swiss Spear. And our opponent explodes, just too far behind, too much value. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Siren into Schooner into Larcenist. I guess never mind, I can't quite play Schooner since Cavern doesn't make blue mana for it. So it might have been better off just playing a tapped Spire on one. Now uh, another Siren's a good draw. And 
and then get our schooner in play next turn. Put on blue-black. Having a vehicle that can potentially survive a sweeper is great. And a Liliana, not very effective here. Quite the opposite. So our opponent's going to make his discard. Probably still ditching a land. And then we can play Schooner and Explore. Crewmate seems good in a grindier matchup like this. Opponent discarded Island. And now I might discard another Schooner, keep Larcenist in case we need to answer a Shieldred. And then land lets me play Crewmate and maybe another 2-drop. Jace, alright, opponent more of a mill deck. But they're gonna try and control the board. That's fine, so play Crewmate. Finding maybe a nice Flash Flyer. And then that can crew the schooner. I'm okay with her opponent plusing Liliana once again, I think. Alright, and now we've got an extra land as well. Could have maybe waited to play our land, so now we would have had another cavern to make this uncounterable. For what it's worth. Our creature land can also help pressure planeswalkers. So we've got most angles covered. Jay's gonna just draw a card here. I see, so it looks like maybe a throne combo deck if they're playing the Desecrator. Probably still ditching Larcenist. Might regret it if they play Shieldred. Could just ditch Cavern. Sure. But yeah, it looks like our opponent's on Throne Combo, Galtan Mavern, Dinosaur Vampire, this is a Merfolk, and now Cruelty can maybe find their Throne of the Grim Captain. Or can reanimate Galtan Mavern, I guess that makes sense too. So definitely gonna be taking that out with our Larcenist. Voltage Surge can also go after a Planeswalker. Don't have to target anything. And then a crew schooner. And clean up some planeswalkers. Crewmate we can leave on top. Okay, pass it back. Had we made this into a treasure, I would have been able to play crewmate still. Small chance our opponent's got a sweeper here. There's a new one that counts the number of permanents in graveyard, which could be effective. Our opponent can animate their creature land here to block, but they're still going to be taking a ton of damage. Breaches is also very nice. Roaming Throne, also worth keeping. What to get rid of? At this point, it's not quite clear. Maybe it is a Roaming Throne after all. And then we could explore, just gonna pass a turn here. Our 
our opponents got their own scoundrel. So yeah, if they have a throne, they have pirates, dino, and merfolk. We still need an extra dino or vampire. So they don't quite have it yet, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a fine hand. Tomb Raider into Schooner. Now, could also go for a tapped Spire. Since there may not be a great target for Larcenist on turn 3, and this way we maybe get to play Raider and another 2 drop on 3 instead. Okay, so opponent on kind of the Esper Legends builds, make disappear into announcement. Let's go for breaches. Could have played cavern, but don't want the opponent to not keep up mana for make disappear, which can maybe punish them. Shield root we can exile with the Larcenist, that's fine. And then still play Tomb Raider. Could also name Golem if we want to make Roaming Throne uncounterable. So maybe save that for next turn. And here go a Raider Larcenist. Don't think we need to make anything that we control into a treasure. Can make a treasure now to pump the raider, although it didn't get a chance to attack. Okay, and then next turn a roaming throne can enable some more synergies. Skitter's fine, although it will be quite good with the wedding announcement once it transforms. I guess we'll name Golem for this one, play roaming throne. Naming pirates. Get a bunch of triggers. Sadly, don't get to double up on all three abilities with a roaming throne. Still only once each turn. Alright, that's a fine trade. Rafine could be a problem. So they could technically still channel an Iganjo and pay the ward, but opponent just sends in Lord Skitter. Back of breaches, so animate spire now. Hang back with roaming throne. Rafine can block. Pay the one. Might have wanted to scry before exiling the top card. Find another breaches, or opponent's not going to be trading for the one in play. Opponent takes it all. Yeah, I think it's worth playing just to have an extra blocker. And then play another Spire. Rafine only 3 power here. Okay, so don't expect Breaches to necessarily survive. Take 8 plus 3, 11, so even a shield root's not lethal. 
Bone and Cycles. We're at three. Yeah, opponent's facing quite a bit of damage on the way back here, especially with our creature lands. And our opponent explodes. Close one here against Asper Legends. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Can go for turn one Raider here, turn two Schooner. And turn three Larsonists. Could have saved myself one damage by playing Ottawara. There's a chance we'll want to channel it instead. Opponent considers, so likely on mono blue. As we see, Essence Scatter. So not having a Cavern of Souls instead of Courtyard could hurt us. Might want to save Larsenus to answer a Haughty Djinn. For now, could just crew Schooner with a Tomb Raider. Or we could play Larsenus just to put an extra threat in play. And then Voltage Surge could technically still be an answer to Haughty Djinn if we produce an artifact. Don't really want to sack the schooner itself. Sure. And yep, that's a scatter. So yeah, Cavern of Souls would be pretty great in this matchup. Let's see if we can explore into it. Well, we did. So had I waited to attack first and then play Larson as second main, it would have been uncounterable, but of course then we would have missed out on two damage. So now we can make that same play. Naming pirates. Submit zero. And get in with a schooner. Opponent casts an impulse. So yeah, ideally we find some card that can cheaply generate an artifact to enable Voltage Surge, so we don't have to worry about Haughty Djinn. And Breaches does exactly that, making treasure tokens when we attack. Still have our Ottawara, which can also get a discount from Breaches. To play Breaches using Cavern. And we've got a nice attack lined up. Opponent's gonna bounce Breaches so we don't get the value here. But they're still taking a damage. Opponent falls to two. If this were a play with fire, we could have ended things, but the value of dealing four damage is certainly worth it. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Cavern of Souls showed up right on time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not perfect, although double crewmate can find lots more pirates. Sticky fingers can maybe generate some treasure. I'll try it. Turn one swamp. And a dream thief, so blue-black fairies. So having our own flying creatures, like the larcenist especially, is going to be pretty important. For now, play crewmates. And find Captain Storm, so... Ideally, we draw a red source so we can play Captain Storm and Sticky Fingers, so we immediately get a plus one counter when making treasure. Ego Drain's gonna have a look. Our hand is pretty redundant. Captain Storm and Crewmate, probably the more high value cards in this matchup. Not too difficult for the opponent to block our flyer. So don't expect that to go unless they're worried about this blocking their creatures. 
Okay, so let's see if we can draw a red land here. Cavern would also do it. It's gonna be breaches, that's painful. Okay, in that case I could still sticky fingers, attack, and then play Captain Storm second main. Just to put something impactful in play and use up our mana. But then now we're not guaranteed to play breaches before attacking. Sleep Cursed Fairy can eventually be quite effective. Cavern of Souls will also help make our pirates uncounterable, opponent likely playing with Spell Stutter. Alright, so in the face of two open mana, I don't think we tap out for breaches. I would rather double spell Tomb Raider and Crewmate. No real reason to play any of the main phase. I don't think we're going for sticky fingers into a potential removal spell. So we can start by attacking. And then I was probably going to put the plus one counter on the crewmate anyways. Play another crewmate. And yeah, those are some nice options. Roaming Throne could be good with Sticky Fingers as well. Although resolving it might be tricky. And yeah, opponent firing off a Make Disappear here just to counter something. So we'll see if they keep up mana once again. They can untap Sleep Cursed twice, but it still won't be able to block. Now with a backup breaches, we'll play the first one. And there's another Make Disappear. Alright, Sticky Fingers, Crewmates, and Attack. Not sure if Captain Storm wants to attack when they can trade for a Fairy Mastermind here, for instance. So I could see that one staying back for a turn. And then we'll get some plus one counters now. Okay. So next turn we can play Roaming Throne before attacking, which will trigger this twice, giving us two more counters. Opponent had a prankster, finding another dream thief, that's acceptable. Eager Rain likely taking Roaming Throne, although Breaches is also very good here. It would have been fun to go off with double sticky fingers and Captain Storm. Yeah, Throne is gone. And another Dream Thief. And then we might see the Prankster here as well. Alright, let's play Breaches. And then a Schooner can trigger Captain Storm. Attack all out. Prevent Prankster from blocking. Might have wanted to put the plus one counter on a crewmate so they both could have been four threes to survive the double block from double Dream Thief. But yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Could use an extra land or two, but maybe with the Explorer from Schooner we can get there. And then I haven't decided yet if I want to play Schooner on Sue or maybe play or Scoundrel. That can also help draw and discard. Um, yeah, maybe play Schooner now. While it's harder for the opponent to counter. And then our pirates will be uncounterable going forward. Doesn't die to go for the throat, doesn't die to sorcery speed removal or cut down. So there's a pretty small list of cards that would take it out. 
And then now to be mana efficient, probably player scoundrel to crew the schooner. That's not gonna work. And we want lands. So let's say they take out our scoundrel, then we'll just try Tomb Raider to crew the schooner instead. And our opponent explodes. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, Fine Hand. Could use some more two and three mana creatures, perhaps. But if Breacher survives, Double Siren is a great way to enable it. Next turn we can sack a map token as well. And find a cavern. So we've got all the lands we'll ever need. Opponent mono black. And the witch's vanity can take out one siren. Back of breaches now. Attack, make a treasure. Now let's see what's next here. An underdog. That we can attack into, and a nightmare, I don't mind. Okay, crewmate's also quite good here. So let's say we play that. Can maybe find something useful before attacking. Another crewmate. Alright, so now I'll attack. Making a treasure and exiling the top card. Can still maybe play a land from exile. Or play another siren. Small chance for opponents playing sweepers like the uh, Gixxus command. But I think we still want to empty our hand as much as possible. So maybe start with the crewmates. Finding... Ooh, a Roaming Throne or Larcenist. Roaming Throne is pretty fun. Doesn't really give us too much more value with Breaches, since it kind of maxes out at three abilities per turn. Larcenist could answer like a shield root if that shows up, although we can still attack past it with Breaches. So it's not that much of a concern. Or we can just get another crewmate, which can maybe find something else useful. Let's go for the Roaming Throne. And then we'll have to play Siren now. Can't wait for Roaming Throne to get double map token. And there's Shieldred. Alright. I guess now with the roll token, they have two creatures that can maybe block. But our opponent's sending underdog sideways, so... Now we can attack back with everyone. So there's no real need to play Roaming Throne first, since again we'll get only three abilities here from Breaches. And maybe that will change our sequencing. Find a land. Opponent at five, play creature land, play roaming throne, and then next turn we can maybe go exploring. Opponent does have a food token to gain more life. Lord Skitter. Not the best at blocking. And we get to untap. Okay. Tomb Raider's got haste. So let's say we explore here with the map. Probably putting more counters on our sirens if possible. Voltage Surge I'm happy to keep. 
So we can exile it with breaches and cast it before blockers are declared. So let's say we animate Spire. Prevent shielders from blocking, take out Lord Skitter. Yeah, that should work out. Could also get an extra plus one counter here, since we know there's a non-land card on top. And then still cast Voltage Surge, thanks to all the treasure. And then I might want to put counter on Spire, so that can attack past a 3-3 or 4-3. Or we can just keep putting counters on our flyers, which is also reasonable. Okay. So attack all out. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Get to rank up here as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Siren into a hasty Tomb Raider. Although I wouldn't be able to sack the map token if I still want to attack with the Tomb Raider. Up against turn one Kumano, so red aggro is going to be tough. Double arsonist helps. Don't think it's realistic for me to be able to block whatever our opponent plays next turn, since it's likely a 3-3 haste. So now do we want to sack the map token? Might just want to turn it into a treasure next turn. If I do sack it, then could maybe put a counter on Siren, and then next turn Larsenist could also still target our own Raider if we'd want to. So we'll uh, turn it into a treasure, which can help double spell later. And then a 1-2 would not be incredibly helpful. Close call. I think we'll just pass. And then maybe turn map token into treasure. Of course could still keep the map token, but I think it's worth it. Scamp with the counter is pretty scary. Yeah, I guess Larsenist is still fine here. Try and neutralize the scamp. And hit for three. Play with fire kills Tomb Raider. Now we do have to watch out for a Monstrous Rage on the etching if that attacks. And this definitely looks like a Monstrous Rage. So I'll probably have to take it for now, but then next turn we could maybe keep up some interaction. Ooh, nice Voltage Surge. Okay, so... Let's say we... Play another Larsenist. No need to turn a Siren into a treasure. So we'll just go after either Swiss Spear or maybe Etching. And then I don't mind attacking with the current Larsenist. Opponent's making mana for Audacity. Okay, let's Voltage Surge in response, and then... Even if they had a Monstrous Rage, they wouldn't have been able to make it large enough to survive. So this potentially a reason to turn the Siren into a treasure, so it wouldn't have died. But now we're still facing kind of the same decision as last turn, except this Larsenist didn't exile anything in play, so if it does trade for Phoenix Chick, it's not the end of the world, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. A little bit awkward because of the Stormcarved Ghost entering tapped, but now it's not a problem. So turn one, Siren sets up a Raider with haste, or we could play a red spell, so next turn I can double Sticky Fingers and Siren. Which is maybe still better. Yep, 
our opponent's blue-white with a Seacrum Coast, typically more aggressive, and a Danik. So it could be soldiers. So yeah, let's go for Siren, Sticky Fingers, the Raider. And then I could play another Raider afterwards. This might get exiled by Brutal Cathar. But we'll still be able to play Breaches and get all three triggers potentially. Yeah, the Life Linkers are going to be kind of tricky to race, but Breaches helps. Now I guess a pair of two threes, even if I prevent one from blocking, can still hold off the Tomb Raider, but we'll just be attacking with the one that has Menace. Alright, cut down, we'll take that out, still get to draw. So now just attack with Siren, make a treasure. And don't mind playing another Siren out. So next turn we can make treasure and exile the top card, perhaps. Shield is always tough. So now it might be worth it to play Captain Storm before attacking to get an extra plus one counter from the treasure. Although it does mean giving up the opportunity to maybe play some more expensive cards that I exile off the top. So I think I'll still just attack with the uh, Sirens. And then see what we get. Because if we did exile a Larcenist, I would have wanted to exile Shieldred while we can. Now I can play Crewmate. And then still maybe hit a Larcenist and play it. Another Crewmate. Alright, I guess Captain Storm can wait. And find our Scoundrel. Gonna hang on to the treasure, no need to explore just yet. Now our opponent does have Plaza of Heroes available to protect Shieldred. But I'm happy to just uh, keep getting value from Breaches. Now I think we go for Captain Storm and Siren before attacking to beef up our creatures a little bit. And I'm pretty much giving up on casting anything expensive. Could still maybe cast a 3-drop after making a treasure. So I don't think we explore before attacking just yet. Keep packing in with our flyers. Our land is good. And we'll pass a turn. And the air opponent explodes while well, they can hold off the ground. The flyers are just going to keep amassing value and getting bigger turn after turn. Alright, so we got to see our blue-red pirates in action. And yeah, there's definitely some cards that impressed me quite a bit. Breaches being one of them, Larcenist giving us a nice removal effect. But also having a vehicle in your creature aggro deck means you're not going to be as soft to sweeper effects as some of the other creature decks like Dinosaurs, which kind of have to put everything in play for the deck to function. So now with a vehicle you can at least recover from a sweeper a little bit better. So the deck can be pretty fast out of the gates, but it can also play a grindier game thanks to the crewmates, the value value from Explorer and of course Breaches. And then if you were to take this into best of three, having the blue mana also means you get access to a few counter spells to help out against control. So you can also counter sweepers in addition to playing your vehicle. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.